Welcome to Nebraskanomics, where we help Nebraskans remove barriers to opportunity with policy research and legislative advice. I'm your host, Jim Vocal, CEO of the Platt Institute, a Nebraska-based think tank promoting policies that make it easier to get a good job, start a business, and help Nebraskans keep more of what they earn. If you want more economic freedom in Nebraska, then let's get started. Joining me now is Nicole Fox, Director of Government Relations here at the Platt Institute and a former Nebraska State Senator. Nicole has the unique perspective of participating in the policymaking process from a variety of angles, while well, speaking with me today about transparency in government and the need to post legislative debate and hearings online. Thanks for being here, Nicole. Thanks for having me, Jim. All right. Currently, Nebraska Public Media live streams the unicameral floor debate and some hearings, but you must watch live to see the broadcast. Right now, Nebraska is one of only a few states that does not archive video recordings online to make them available to view later. Here at the Platt Institute, as part of your job to follow legislation as it moves through the unicameral, how have you kept up with the hearing and floor debate that you can't watch in person or in real time or on the live stream? Well, first of all, I'd like to say I'm actually really fortunate in my role at Platt because I can monitor most legislative activities in real time. But there are days where we may be interested in bills that are being heard simultaneously in two different committees, and I can only be in one committee and can't monitor the other. Additionally, there are times where I may be involved in meetings that take me away from hearing rooms or take me away from what's going on in the legislative chamber. So during those times, I rely on secondhand information. And that secondhand information may be colleagues at the Capitol. It could be legislative staff or reaching out to senators after the fact. It could be relying on media coverage, be it newspaper articles or watching the evening news. It could be monitoring social media. Basically, it's the same avenues that hardworking Nebraskans rely on, those that are trying to run their businesses or take care of their families or work their nine to five jobs. So when you were serving as a state senator, how would having the videos archived online be beneficial to you and your constituents? Well, first, I'd like to mention that currently there are transcripts available of legislative proceedings, but those transcripts, they're not always available in a timely manner. And sometimes when you are able to locate them, you have to go through dozens, sometimes hundreds of pages just to find information on maybe that one bill that you're looking for. And another thing is that some people that while they do like to read, some people prefer to obtain their information through a presentation style form. So being able to watch a video would, would maybe fit their needs better. As a legislator, in a single session, you might be dealing with weeding through six, 700 bills that are introduced. And as a senator, you can't know everything that's going on in every committee. So your focus, first of all, are the bills that you've introduced yourself. Secondly, you might be focused on the bills that are in the committees in which you're assigned to. And then, of course, there's always what I call those major pieces of legislation. You know about it because the media is talking about it. Your colleagues are talking about it. But again, there's still a lot of bills to go. And when they hit the floor, yeah, there's a lot of information that, that you have to be up to speed on. And so if it's an area that you're not a subject matter expert in, you know, you're an urban senator and you don't understand maybe things that are going on in rural parts of the states, you might be reliant on your colleagues. You might be reliant on the lobby. And then also those secondhand sources of information that I had mentioned earlier. Another thing is that we're in this era now of term limits. So there is a lot of missing historical knowledge. As a senator, you may be faced with floor debate on a bill that has a significant history. It could be a bill that's been introduced multiple times, but over the course of the introductions, it's evolved because there's been heavy opposition. So the bill introductions have changed to satisfy the opposition. The other thing is that sometimes legislation gets passed, but then in the implementation process, it's discovered that some things need to be fine-tuned. So second bills maybe need to be introduced to fine-tune those, or sometimes there are issues happening at the federal level where we have to, at the state level, update our rules and regulations and laws so that it fits with the federal scheme. Nicole, on a fundamental level, 
why do you believe transparency in government is important for all of us here in Nebraska? Well, essentially, policymaking decisions that are occurring in our unicameral are affecting everyday, hardworking Nebraskans. They're affecting those that are running businesses, and they're affecting those that are taking care of our loved ones. So I think it's important that Nebraskans have access to what goes into the policy decisions that are being made. Every single bill in our state that gets introduced gets a hearing. So that means that there's this wealth of information. At every public hearing, there are opponents and there are supporters, and they're coming in to testify as to why they support or oppose a bill. And I think it's important that the public has access to that information. I also think it's important that the public has access to how their senators are responding. So if there's a committee hearing, they might be interested in the questions that their senators are raising or just the committee in general has for people that are testifying. And I also think it's important that the public has access to concerns raised during floor debate when a bill hits the floor, and also just to have access to why people are getting on the mic and speaking up either in support or opposition of a bill. We do know that all recorded votes, you can access those on the legislature's webpage, but the yays and the nays and the present not voting, especially the present not voting, that bill with that record doesn't tell you why. So I think it's much as it, it's, you know, it's important for our citizens to be informed. It's also important for them to be engaged. And so I think when you've got an informed citizen, they're more likely to engage with legislators. As a former legislature, I felt like I had more clout when I was making policy decisions when I could say issue affects one of my constituents or it affects multiple constituents. And here's why. I think it's important that legislators get feedback from the people that put them in office. All right. Let's go back to this last session in 2022. There was an effort to pass legislation requiring these videos to be archived, but it failed to progress. The bill was prioritized even. What were the main barriers, Nicole, to getting this bill across the finish line and heard on the legislative floor? Well, the good news is that we almost made it. The bill, it was LB 777, and this bill would have created the archive. It was introduced by Senator Tom Brewer, and the bill did advance out of committee, and it did receive a speaker priority from Speaker Hilgers. But what unfortunately happened is that this past session was a short 60-day session, so we were limited on time. And also with everything going on with the ARPA funding debates, and there were some major legislative proposals where it was very important that those bills get heard, we just ran out of time. So that was really the main barrier. Well, it sounds like it wasn't a policy issue. It was just a matter of logistics and running out of time. Is that correct? Correct. All right. Let's look forward now. What would you like to see happen to make this level of access and government transparency available to Nebraskans? Well, what I would like to see happen is this bill get reintroduced next session. And in fact, I anticipate that it will. I've had discussions with Senator Brewer, and he is very much interested in bringing this bill forward again. And so because of the progress we made during the 2022 session, I do think that we'll make significant progress in the 2023 session. The bill really had no major opposition. The clerk did testify at the hearing, and he raised a couple of concerns. But I think that those are concerns that we can address with a new bill. So I think we have that on our side. And also, I know that a lot of senators that will be returning in 2023 have reached out to me in support of this bill. They want to see this bill reintroduced. And I know here at Platt, we have had several people reach out to us, thanking us for our support of this bill. And again, hoping that, that there will be another bill introduced in 2023. So I'm optimistic for next session that we'll, we'll get the archive across the finish line. Well, things out promising for the future. Obviously, this is an important issue for taxpayers across the state and transparency and giving them access to, to information and the policy decisions happening in Lincoln. Nicole, thank you so much for taking the time to talk about the importance of making the policy process accessible for Nebraskans and of government transparency. If you think it's important to archive the legislative videos online, please sign the petition. We will keep you informed on this issue and let you know how you can help advocate to get the legislative videos archived online. Thank you for listening to today's episode. 
If you want more economic freedom in Nebraska, please visit platinstitute.org to make a donation to help fund our research and advocacy. Or you can subscribe to our newsletter and learn about today's most important issues facing Nebraskans. It's time to stop the status quo. Let's remove economic barriers and make Nebraskans proud.